So Corporal Hoover is making sure everything's set and he'll give the signal. <laughs> now in that short distance divide must reach four gear between 15 and 30 miles an hour. As I said, ladies and gentlemen, accidents can and do happen. But he's up. Just need to get that bike into neutral. And off we go. Oh no, it's not it's not going out. It's not going into neutral. So here we go with the second jump. Good demonstration there. Now we don't think a single car is really hard enough. And I don't think Dan Ascot thinks so either. Here comes called Dan Ascot. And as you can see, they've added four bikes to the mix. So this isn't just an example of the bravery and confidence the team instilled in its riders, that they are able to perform these tricks. But it's also all about the trust developed between them during their training. And 20 litres of petrol. Oh yeah. Well, you watched it, didn't you, on the, on the train this morning? And the riders are prepared for the fire jump. Once Corporal Hoover, the chief instructor, is happy, he will signal the two riders off to the side and they will light their firebrands and come and light the fire. Now, ladies and gentlemen, you may feel some heat. next time chaps. Right, leading from the front, as you would expect from any officer, is Captain John McClellan. And I can tell you from experience, first through, it's very, very hot. And just as with the jump ride, the idea is to get the front of the machine as high as possible. Next through, you saw Sergeant Arnold. Now we have Sergeant Wynn. Followed by Cripples Coughlin and Clark. <laughs> Coming to the end, we've got Sig Green. Good job there by Sig Green. Now Cripples Goodwin. And through what are usually dying embers, Lance Corporal Ryan and Lance Corporal Wilson. Well, there are some good and some not so good jumps there. Again, there are no straps or harnesses holding the riders to these machines. They're held together with strength and determination and the skill of those riders keeping those bikes as close as they possibly can together. So as they go round for a second half lap and prepare to dismount in front of the dais, just watch how the top three get off. Now is the moment these nine riders have been waiting for the opening ride, the Irish whip, and the reverse ride. And these bikes are about as standard as they come in the white helmet. And then there are also the trick bikes, which have their rear suspension replaced with metal work provided by Irocross, and are festooned with additional handles, bars, racks, to accommodate the ladders and plates, etc. The tableau, which you can see coming into the arena now, is an example of a trick bike. Let's face it, you struggle to fit 10 riders on a normal bike. This trick is being ridden by Corporal Clark, and it's the only trick in the team's arsenal that uses straps or harnesses to keep the riders attached. It will weigh about one ton.
following the tableau is the wheelbarrow. This trick is being ridden by Lance Corporal Hitchmo, who, while riding the bike and holding the ankles of Corporal Nixon, might decide to do a little extra PT and do some press ups with Corporal Nixon's feet. This trick is pretty tough on both the riders, especially across the uneven grass surfaces that seem sometimes to play on. There we go, a little extra PT. Coming in now, we have the ladder headstand. Next into the arena we have the Maltese Cross, which has been ridden by Lance Cromwell Holcroft. With the additional weight of the team captain on top of that ladder, this trick is pretty difficult to control. Paul Holcroft is expertly demonstrating there that men can actually multitask. In it. Now precision here is key and the riders must go from marker to marker at exactly the right time. With so many motorcycles in the arena at the same time, this ride has to be carefully choreographed. Again, like all the rides, the team will form up with the parade ground precision to exit the arena. The answer, ex-team members have their own opinion. It's still pretty hard, but not by the looks of it for Lance Corporal Conway who unfortunately leaves the team and the army in May. Here to watch his swan song is Cherry, his girlfriend. And I'm sure he'll be just as successful in the real world as he has been in the army. Now he's taking another lap to allow a bit of extra time for the next trip to be prepared. Now the dismount of the forward ladder is pretty tricky because Cool Conway should walk over the top of that ladder, down the front, and take control of the machine again. Here is the largest of the fans, the six bike. 22 riders on six machines. This is where being below average is a disadvantage. If you're big, you end up at the bottom, which is pretty uncomfortable. And if you're small, you find yourself at the top, which can sometimes be equally restricting. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, there are no straps in this trip. The top man is perched up there, relying on everyone else below him to hold strong. Now he's demonstrating a method of doing any last minute prep on the way to work even if you have to ride to work. Deep in 
control there, not good with. So, for the final time today, ladies and gentlemen, these are the riders for the closing ride. First of all, demonstrating to you a series of tight cuts. Shortly they will peel off and prepare for a set of single and then double head to head. Now the easiest way to describe head to head is chicken, white helmet style. these blocks, then approach the diet and present a salute to the core colonel. Presenting the final salute today is the team sergeant, Sergeant Arnold. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please, a round of Thank you. 